I want to tell you a story about physical damage from a medication, from a prescribed medication after my husband passed away. After my husband, who I believe suicided from psych medications. And I was in a state of trauma. It was a traumatic experience and um, I won't go into detail, but um, so I was being in my state of trauma and with no family support. I was, the response from medical was to medicate the heck out of me. And, uh, I had already, my sleep issue was already really bad and they were, you know, consistently misdiagnosing the sleep issue as a psych issue. And, uh, my sleep issue was critical, really. And, um... Oh, just the the just the continual failure in my medical history is just just mind blowing how I've been failed over and over and over again. So just this just white knuckling this this narrative that everything is a psychiatric issue, right? So there, you know, my my sleep issue was really bad already but it was being, you know, they, they try to psych drug medical issues out of you. They try, I mean, uh, especially women, we are so misdiagnosed and underdiagnosed for medical issues, like legitimate medical, physical issues, chronic illnesses or chronic diseases or rare diseases. We are notoriously you know, they, the go-to is psychiatry, right? The default is, you know, family doctor doesn't know what's wrong. Nobody can figure out what's wrong. So the default is send you to a psychiatrist and start drugging you into silence, right? Or making an assumption that it's a psychiatric issue. So my sleep was serious, a serious issue. And, and I was sleepwalking, I was sleep eating and, you know, my sleep was being disrupted and my brain was being disrupted and I, you know, and I'm a single mom and I've got dogs and, um, a child and, you know, I'm, I'm in crisis from this, from this suicide and no family to support me, no family, you know, to come and I think a sister came for a week I, I was collapsing. I, I, you know what? I needed to collapse. I needed to fall apart and I needed to be taken care of. I didn't need company for me to cook and clean for, you know, some families don't know how to respond to medical crisis, uh, to, to, to psychological crisis, to grief, to there are times in life when people need to fall apart when people fall apart legitimately and they need to be carried they need to be taken care of they need to be fed uh you know there are times when people need to step in and need help need someone doing the laundry when you are mentally falling apart mentally pa falling apart from a suicide when you've got, you know, dogs and kids and a huge yard and a work and tons of responsibilities, mentally falling apart from a suicide isn't a mental illness. And how someone is expected to carry that on their shoulders and have no right to fall apart is just a terrible, terrible thing. There are thing, there are times in life when you need to be carried and taken care of and fed and someone to take care of your children. But if you come from a dysfunctional family, my God, you know, you know what's going to happen. 
you're going to be in the hands of a psychiatrist who's going to drug the hell out of you. And that's exactly what happened to me. So the sleep issue was serious already back then and sleepwalking, sleep eating. And I was in crisis from the suicide. They just drugged and drugged and drugged and drugged me. I don't know how I managed. I don't know how I managed as well as I did. You know, I, I could easily start crying and I'm going to try to stop myself from doing so. There were times, I don't know if some of you have seen that, it's a black and white video of World War II soldiers coming back and they're in a they're in a psych unit and they're like this, right? And it's literal shell shock. There were times I was in that condition and you know, outside and about to open my car door and literally crumbling to the ground and laying on the road like that. I was so traumatized. But in retrospect, I wonder how much of that was the drugs that they were giving me. I wonder now, I mean, literally this second when I had that flashback of me, you know, I, th I, I was having myoclonic jerks falling asleep. I think I was having seizures in my sleep from all the drugs they were giving me. It's traumatizing talking about it, but it's also important I talk about this be to make other people aware. A huge, huge message is that there is no patient advocacy. There was no one to protect me from what psychiatry was doing to me. Literally, there wasn't a soul on earth. People were watching from afar. There were people, you know, that would help a little bit that would just observe. There was no one to step in and say, okay, what's happening? What are they giving you? What drugs are they giving you? What's going on? Like there has to, you know, there has to be medically educated, pharmaceutically educated advocates for patients that do not have families. And absolutely you can get permanently injured and killed and people do when there's nobody overseeing and managing what's happening behind closed doors between you and a psychiatrist. So now that I've said all that, now my story about the Remron sounds even trivial, but I'll tell you, I'll have to start another video.